So welcome everybody to this latest video on 162 Maths and in this video we're going to go over a quick topic test with a collection of some GCSE exam style questions on vectors at foundation level. Now a copy of the questions for you to have an attempt at before watching through this video is available for you to download by clicking on the link in the description which I strongly recommend you do to see how much understanding you have on this topic. Now before we get started it's worth noting that there is no indication about whether these questions are calculator or non-calculator so what we'll do is we'll just assume that they are non-calculator and make sure we show full working out and if they do appear on a calculator paper well it's going to be a lot easier. Now let's have a look at question one so the question says use the diagram to answer questions one to four the diagram shows three vectors a b and c and the question one says write down the vector in, of a in column form. Now again, just a quick reminder with regards to column form, the first, the top number refers to the left and the right movement, and the second number, or the bottom number, refers to the up-down movement. If it's to the left, it's going to be negative, and if it's to the right, it's going to be positive, and if it's up, it's positive, and if it's down, it's negative. So looking at A, now you can see that the arrow is going upwards, so this is going to be our starting point. So what we need to do is work out the horizontal movement first, which is two, that's two to the right, and we're going five up, so it's gonna be five. Now, if you did write a plus, that's absolutely fine. You're not gonna lose any marks for it, but you're also not gonna lose any marks if you don't write the plus. The only time you need to identify the sign is when it's negative. Looking at question two, it says, write down the vector of minus C. Now, if C is starting here because the arrow is going downwards, so here, C equals, and it's going to be in terms of 4 to the left, so that's going to be minus 4, and 3 down, so that's going to be minus 3. Now the question is actually asking for minus C, so it's going in the opposite direction, so that therefore is going to be positive 4 and positive 3. And let's just stick that in a column vector. So for this answer we should have 4, 3. Moving on to question three, it says write in column form the vector that is parallel to B and twice as long as B. Now B, if we just go back to the diagram, has a column vector of two minus two. So therefore, if it's going to be parallel, then that means the column vector is going to be exactly the same. But if it's twice as long, then what we need to do is we need to multiply that vector by 2. So here 2 times 2 is 4 and 2 times minus 2 is minus 4. Now moving on to question 4 it says which of the following is true? We need to circle our answer. Now there's a couple of ways in which we can answer this question. We can either use the diagram to work it out or we can use column vectors. Now I personally would opt for the column vectors only because we've simply written down all the column vectors already. So if I go back to the diagram A was 2, 5, B was 2 minus 2, you can see above, and C, if I go back to question 2, is minus 4 minus 3. So for this what I need to do is just show if these calculations are actually true. So with A, does A equal B plus C? Well if I add B plus C I'm going to get minus 2 and minus 5 and that's not the same so that there is false. For the second one A minus B, well 2 take away 2 is 0 so it's definitely not going to be that one because the first number should be minus 4. For the third one we've got a plus b plus c equals zero so let's have a look so we've got two plus two which is four take away four is zero so that looks good so far and five minus two which is three take away three is zero so this one is the one that is true and just to make sure let's have a look if a plus b is true well two plus two is positive four and c is minus four so that there is false Moving on to question five, it says work out three times the column vector of minus two, four. So all we need to do here is just multiply the numbers inside the column vector by three. So two times minus three is minus six, and three times four is 12. Moving on to five B, so again, another column vector calculation. So here we've got two minus minus one and three minus five. Well, two minus minus one, well, two minuses make a plus, so that's gonna be three and three take away five is minus two. 
Then moving on to question six, it says that two vectors P and Q are shown on the grid. Write down in terms of P and Q, the vector of H to C dash. Well, C dash is here and H is here. So we want to go from H to that point. So here we can only use P's and Q's. So for here, I'm going to go 2P. So it's going to be 2P. And because I'm going here, so that's P, that's P, and then using Q, we've got one, two, and three. Q, Q, and Q. So it's going to be 2P plus 3Q. It then says write in letters any vector equal to 2P plus uh, minus 4Q. So let me just get rid of all of this so we're not doing that I probably wouldn't recommend doing that in the example let's there you go so if I just pick a letter so let's just go for um I don't know why and hope that it fits in the diagram well 2p is going here so that's one there one there so it's p p and then minus q is going down four places so one two three four so one possible answer could be y to b Another possible answer you could have that fits in the diagram is going to be Z to C. Or you could have A dash to D. Or you could have B dash to E. And any of those would be fine to get the one mark. Please do not give more than one answer. Now moving on to question 6C. It says draw on the diagram the vector represented by P minus 2Q plus minus 2P plus Q equals minus p plus q so let's have a look and start with a particular letter now for this let me just quickly get rid of this just so i'm not getting any confusion on what i'm doing so let's start off by picking a point so let's start off with u and we're going to go in the column vectors of doing this so p minus 2q so i'm going to go right one square and down two squares so right one down two so that's going to be there so this represents P and minus 2Q. And then let me just color code this. And then we're going plus minus 2P. So from that point of I, we're going minus 2P. So that's going to be here to G. And we're going up Q. So that's going to be there. And let me just put the arrows so we know where we're going. And that is minus 2p plus q, so minus 2p plus q. And then for our third one here, what we just need to do is work out what this length here is going to be. And that's going to be minus p plus q. Well, minus p plus q in brackets is equal to minus p minus q and this is going to be going to well p plus q going there is going to be like going in that direction there so now let's move on to question seven so question seven says work out the values of a and b so for this let's have a look at what we've got so looking using this top line we know that a plus four equals seven so therefore a equals three so that's a nice easy one and then looking at the bottom row we've got six plus b equals three so if we take away six we end up with minus three then moving on to question seven b it says work out the value of c so again we're going to use a very similar method to what we did above so here let's start by working this out so Let's have a look at that top row. So here we've got C plus two times three, which is six equals D. Now because I've got two letters, I can't work out what C and D is because it could be absolutely anything. So now let's have a look at the second, the bottom row. And so that then becomes five plus two D equals eight. Now I can use this to work out what D is. So two D equals three, we we'll take away five. So D equals 3 over 2 or 
So then using this, what I can then do is swap D for 1.5 and we'll work with decimals. So then looking at this, I get C plus six equals 1.5. So if I take away the six, I end up with six equals minus 4.5. Or minus four and a half or minus nine over two so any of those answers would be absolutely fine moving on to question eight it says work out the transformation that maps shape a to shape b so we're going from this to this so if i pick a particular point so let's just go for the peak of that sort of roof or the house and let's go from this point to this point so here we're going what's well, going to be a translation to start off with because the shape hasn't changed shape so it's important that we do write that and with the column vector and we're going one two three four five six and then we're going three down so it's going to be minus three so it's important that you write down translation that will be one mark and then the column vector which will be our second mark well actually it just says a column vector so we should be okay if you do, don't write down the uh, word translation. But in a typical transformation question, you would need to write that down. Then it says for question nine, triangle T is mapped to triangle R by the translation of minus three, minus two. Draw triangle R on the grid. So let's pick a point on triangle T. So let's go for this point. I'm going to use this column vector, which is minus three. So it's three to the left and two down. So that point is going to be there. Let's then pick another point and use the same translation so minus three to the left and two down so that's going to be there and our third point which is here so we're going to go three to the left and two down is going to be there so our translated shape and you want to try and make sure you're using a ruler which now I'm not setting a very good example hopefully you would use it and then we label that as R so that's where the triangle R should be located then moving on to our last question, it says that shape L is mapped to shape M by the column vector of 4 minus 3 and shape M is mapped to the shape N by the vector of minus 3 minus 5. And it says work out the uh, work out the vector that maps L to N. Now for this, what we need to do is basically add these two vectors together. So what we need to work out is this. So 4 minus 3 plus minus three minus five and work that out so this is going to be four minus three and minus three sorry plus that should be and we've got plus minus five so this then becomes four minus three and this becomes minus three minus five so four minus three is one and minus three minus five is minus eight and that there is our final answer